Do you still remember the way to measure the slope of a straight line? Rise over run. Remember that? Let's do a quick review. So we have all the case scenario. The first case, the first case is the line is going uphill. I have a green line. The green line is going uphill. Therefore, the slope is positive. How do you measure the slope of this line? First, we need two points and then we do a rise over run. So run. So we run a few units to the right and then we go a few units up. So the run, how many units did you run from this point to this point? You have to write this down and then from the corner to this point and then you write down the rise and then the slope of this straight line is you have to draw a fraction and then rise over run. So which is a number divided by a number and then you have to make sure that the fraction is positive because the line is going uphill the slope is positive and then the second case is going downhill from one point to another point you also measure the rise and then the run so you have one number divided by another number you have to make sure that the fraction the slope is negative because the line is going downhill for horizontal line the slope is equal to zero for vertical line the slope is undefined this is for straight line and then you study this back in algebra right so in calculus we are going to do a little bit more challenging what if i don't have a straight line what if i have a parabola so what if the graph of a function is not a straight line how to use rise over run to measure the slope so let's say we have a parabola so i have a parabola what is the slope of the parabola at this point so this piece is no longer a straight line using rise over run is not going to work however we are going to employ this method and then we are going to use another method for curve so for straight line easy rise over run or you have two points or for example you have two points you have one straight line you have two points oh if you already know the coordinate then you don't even need a graph right so let's say i have a piece of paper i give you two points point one and point two so for the first point i give you x1 y1 for the second point i give you x2 y2 then you don't even need the graph right so all you have to do is you have to calculate and say slope is equals to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 so you can get the slope without drawing any picture or you have a picture uh, on, on a graphing paper and then you point out the x and y coordinate of those two points and then you plug it into the formula and then you calculate the slope that is okay but this is still for straight line only i am talking about a parabola so for parabola you cannot draw two two points and then do y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 to calculate the slope that is not going to work anymore because the curve the curve is not a straight line so how do we take care of this case i have a curve i want to measure the slope at a point how do we do it so we have a parabola and then we have a yellow point so the first thing that we can do is we draw a straight line so do you see this blue straight line so this blue straight line is touching the yellow point and then can you use can you just use one point to calculate the slope so we used to do y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 what if you have one point only can you use the formula the answer is no this formula requires four coordinates four numbers if you only have one point you only have two numbers so you are still looking for another point however if you draw a blue line the blue line is touching the curve exactly one time the, the maximum you can find is one point so that means having one point is not enough to measure the slope that means to measure the slope using the straight line method we need another point all right so let me move on to the next picture so in the next picture i have a parabola and then i have four dots one green one purple and then one yellow okay so my what i am asking is can you measure the slope of the curve at the green point the purple point and the yellow point can you do that for me i have a parabola not a straight line i have a green point i have a purple point i have a yellow point my question is for each point tell me the slope of the curve at that point but the problem was having one point is not enough to use the slope formula to calculate to calculate the slope 
and also look look at this parabola. So we start going down, and then when we reach to the vertex, we have a slope equals to zero, and then we go up. So that means the slope goes from negative to zero and then positive, and also the slope is changing right from zero and then from negative to zero and then positive. So the slope of this parabola is changing depending on the selected x value. All right. In in case uh, you still don't understand, so if I draw another point right here and then draw a line, do we agree that this line is steeper compared to this line? This line is less steeper. That means the steeper line has a bigger slope, negative and bigger slope. The less steeper line has a negative and a smaller slope. So at the yellow point, the slope is positive. The, look at the second line. At the yellow point, the slope is positive because if you look at this line touching the, the yellow point, this line is going uphill, so therefore the slope is positive. At the vertex, we have a horizontal line. The slope is zero because the horizontal line is horizontal. And then at the green point, we have a negative slope. So unlike linear function, the slope of the parabola is not a constant value. That means for a parabola, you pick a bunch of x value, right? So for each x value you selected, you get a different slope. So let's say when x is equals to negative 3, you have a slope. When x is equals to negative 1, you have another slope. You are not going to get the same slope the whole time. That is not possible because the slope of the parabola is changing. So since the slope of the parabola is changing, how do you write a function to describe this? You don't say you don't write a sentence and say the slope is changing. I want you to write a function to describe how the slope changes. Parabola, let's say f of x equals to x squared. The slope of the parabola is changing. I want you to write one function to describe how the slope changes. Can you do that? Okay, so let me bring you to that point. I have to introduce tangent line and secant line. So let me give you another curve. So this curve is f of x. So f of x is a curve, it's not a straight line that is very clear. And then I pick a yellow point. My question is, I would like to find the slope of the curve at the yellow point. Okay, let's do this again. We have a red curve that represents f of x. I have a yellow point on the curve. My question is, I want to find the slope of the curve at the yellow point, not at anywhere else, just at the yellow point. How do you do it? Well, go back to the method that I just introduced. We have to draw a tangent line. Okay, so let me just go ahead and draw, draw a tangent line. So let me do, do the, let me match the color for you. So I'm going to draw a tangent line. So this is a tangent line. So this is tangent line. Uh, what is tangent line? Tangent line is a straight line. Again, straight, not, not curved. Tangent line is a straight line that touches the point exactly one time. It's a straight line touching the point that you want exactly one time. Next question. Having one point, is this enough to calculate the slope? The answer is no. The slope formula y2, y1, x2, x1 requires four number. You only have two, you only have one so far. So what you have right now is x1 and then y1. That's all you have. So how do you get another point? To get another point, I have to use a secant line. So what is a secant line? So let me change to another color. Secant line is this. You draw a line that goes across the graph two times. So that means that gives you two points, one and two. So this will be x2 minus x2 and y2. Now, the secant line and the tangent line, they are both a straight line. Now, the next question, what is the slope of the secant line? So the slope of the secant line is, so I should say a uh, slope. Uh, how, how about secant slope? Secant slope that is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So now having two points, I am able to find the slope of the secant line. However, uh, for do you see that the secant line is touching another point? So other than the yellow point, I have another point. That is not what I need. Secant lines and tangent lines, they are not the same. 
I am trying to use the tangent line to estimate the slope of the curve at the yellow point. In order to do so, I have to start at the secant line. So what do you mean by start at the secant line? So here is how we do it. So let me go ahead and then erase this. I'm going to relabel them. Before we do that, I am going to do the rise or run. Okay. So this is run and then this is rise. Okay, so for the first point, I have x, and then the y value, I'm going to plug in x, so that means the y value is f of x. And then I need to make a few steps to the right, right? So I am going to call this x plus delta x. So this triangle x is called delta x, which means change of x. In mathematics, delta means change. I need to take a few steps forward and then I take a few steps up. So this will be the coordinate will be x comma f of x plus plus delta x. So this will be x and then comma x f of x plus delta x. And then we, we can do this. So the slope is equals to y2 minus y1, which is f of x plus delta x, and then minus f of x, and then x2 minus x1, so x2 is, oh, ha, huh, there is a little mistake right there. I already make a few steps forward, right? So this is x plus delta x, because I already make a few steps forward. So that y x2 is x plus delta x, and then minus x1, which is just x. So as you can see in the denominator, the two x got cancelled, right? And then uh, what else do we have to do? The next thing that we will have to do is we will have to minimize delta x because as soon as we minimize the delta x, the secant line becomes the tangent line. Now, here is what I want you to picture in your mind. I, can't, I cannot give you an, an animation because having the tools on, on this app is not enough to create an animation. So follow me. I have a point right here, right? So this is another point. How do you go from this point back to the yellow point? So this is how. So look at this point right here. Stop writing. Look at this point. So imagine this. You want to minimize delta x. That means you want to shrink this point from this space, from this spot, to this part. So the way we do it is this. This is where we start. So let's do it now. Now we start. So starting at this point, and then you want to go from this point to the yellow point. So this is how you minimize. So do we agree that imagine you have your finger at this point, and then you grab this point, and then you follow along the curve, and then you move to this point. So after you move the blue point to, to the yellow point, the tangent, the secant line, becomes the tangent line. Let's do this again. You put your finger right here. And then you want to move this blue point along the curve until you reach to the yellow point. Starting right here, move along until you reach to the yellow dot. So once you reach to the yellow dot, do we agree that as the line moves as you move? Once you reach to the yellow dot, the secant line becomes a tangent line. Right, so minimize delta x, that means you have to set up a limit. So that means this means you have to set up a limit and then you have to let delta x goes to zero. That is what do I mean by minimize x. And then in some textbook, they instead of call this delta x, they call that a h. Some textbook use delta x, some textbook use h. Uh, when I do my teaching, I always use h. I would just say we let the delta x equals to h. So regarding the detail of tangent line and secant line, I would like to introduce that in the next video. So that will be all for this video. If you think that the instruction is helpful, give me a like, share the video for me, click the subscribe button if you're on your way out. I will catch you all in the next lesson for more information. Signing out for now.